Hi and welcome back to a new video. We are again at Case King and here in the back we have a PC which was actually burning. It was in an apartment which was burning down and Case King acquired this PC because they're doing something which is called King My Case, basically asking uh, viewers to send in their old PCs or they're picking up the old PCs and pimping them or building new PCs and bring back new ones. Like ping, Pimp My Right basically. Sonic, the heart of your system. So yeah. That is the King My Case PC for the first episode. And uh, yeah, you can see the CPU is missing. Because in the process of shooting the video for Case King, I figured out that the CPU was quite protected underneath the AIO. And yep, the CPU actually survived. It was a 2700X. I put it into a different AM4 motherboard after cleaning it a little bit and it was working without any issues, which is quite awesome actually. But it's also, it kind of makes sense. Looking at these parts like that was a fan. Those are the remaining parts of a fan, which was sitting probably at somewhere like, I don't know, 150 degrees Celsius, because typically these kinds of plastics inside a PC are melting at, I don't know, somewhere between 80 and 140 degrees Celsius. Those are the typical ranges where plastics are melting, but those are also ranges which are not problematic for like PCBs and stuff. And as long as everything is protected, like here with the back plate, I guess there is hope that things are still working. And that's what we will try and check out for today's video. We will try to get out the GPU, well, the graphics card itself, and see if this thing actually still works. I think it could be. One thing which could be a bit problematic are the connectors, because if the plastic inside the connector is burnt, then that could be an issue. But worst case, we will just have to plug it as a second VGA and test if it's detected as a secondary device. We will find out, but yeah. So far quite impressive that the 2700X actually survived this, but it was also quite well protected behind the AIO. I mean, the front part looks ho absolutely horrible, but looking at the back, yeah, it's not even that bad. All right, let's see. Yeah, so removing the cables. It's not really an issue. Yeah, that looks like a piece of memory stuff. Okay. So this part looks like a, a brace for GPU support. Yeah. It actually doesn't look so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the GPU is more damaged than I thought. Seems like there was a huge amount of the fire like directly underneath it. Looks like heavily bent and uh, I'm not sure if some of those SMD components already fell off due to the heat. If that's the case then yeah well there's definitely no hope but I guess we will have to remove the back plate and see how it looks like. Not great. <laughs> For the internals of the PC I mean there is no hope whatsoever, like no, no chance that anything would still work in there, yeah. I just removed all the screws from the backplate and now we'll try to remove the backplate without breaking anything, but not sure if it glued itself to the card, we'll find out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean underneath the backplate, it's so-so. Underneath the thermal pad everything is fine, like also here. This looks okay, but there are so many places where like one tiny SMD resistor could be missing and that's, yeah, that could be the end of the card, but I mean, overall so far, I guess there's still like 10% a chance that it, it's working or yeah, let's see. So the rear part, I think, looks quite okay. 
there are not that many components and the ones I can see I mean this is not that great but not sure if this was too much heat or not the area in, over here in general looks okay-ish GPU looks fine for sure yeah but the area in front uh, yeah could be too warm but we will find out have to remove that plate and check how it looks underneath all right back at my place shopped some stuff like gloves and uh, box we can use for cleaning the card we will first start with some just ordinary dish soap and then some distilled water just to get off like most of the normal residues which are left from like the the burning process especially around the the display connector area there's a lot of dirt and yeah we will try to gently remove that first before we switch over to like more aggressive cleaners to see if we can remove that stuff and if there's any chance to get this back to life and also the smell is very aggressive and i hope we can get rid of the smell just by using the dish soap and stuff all right let's see at least on the connectors yeah, it looks like we can at least remove some of the stuff. All right, uh, I will clean this. It will probably take like 15 minutes just to have the front and back side, and then we will be back. Yeah, the first run looked quite okay. Back side looks much better. Uh, the only area which is still a bit dirty is the front right here. Uh, the connector, the NV-Link connector on top, and especially the area of like uh, display port and HDMI connectors, like display output. Yeah, that looks still quite nasty right here. But the rest of the card looks surprisingly clean. There are some spots where I'm not sure if like those are just empty solder pads or if some of those SMDs are missing. If they're missing, that would be a problem. Otherwise, not so much. We'll find out. There's also this spot right here. You can see the PCB is definitely bent. Could be due to the heat. That could be a problem, but the PCB materials can sustain quite a bit, so could be that this isn't even a problem. Yeah, this thing starts to look like a graphics card again. Just cleaning with water and like dish soap, that's actually quite good. I have hope that this this thing still works. Like everybody at Case King said, there's no way this, this is still alive, but yeah, we'll find out. Cleaning petrol will be like the, it's pretty, pretty similar to like acetone, but acetone is more aggressive and I'm not sure if it will dissolve like my, my plastic cup, whatever. Yeah, so we will try the, the cleaning petrol stuff and see if this helps. I prepared the setup for the testing with a very long riser cable, which will make it easier just to check the GPU while it's running. We just want to boot to Windows or just get a screen if it even works, like a display signal. See if that works out. And before we do that, we're going to do a quick check just between uh, 12 volt and ground to see if there is a short. I already checked it in a German video. It was like 3 point something kilo ohm, as you could see. So there is definitely no short between 12 volt and ground, which is already great. Then we can do the basic checks, like check the memory resistance, take one of the bigger SMD caps, like the filter caps behind the memory. And those should be typically between like 20 and 50 ohm, but that is absolutely in line. Same goes for the GPU, but GPU is always a bit more tricky. Same, just use one of those bigger filter caps on the back. And that has a very low resistance typically so yeah with this type of multimeter you would need like a milli ohm meet, um, multimeter but yeah 0 0.1 0 0.2 ohm it's already an indication that's not a short so that's great 
will attach the riser cable and then just using the liquid nitrogen container, like no LN2, but just for buffer mass to see if we can get a display signal or if it's dead. All right, standby power is there, so it didn't straight power off, which is great, but we already checked. We didn't have a short, so that's good. Um, put the GPU on a box, which will make it easier for the handling part, edit the LN2 container. We will try this display port first. The one on top is definitely broken, like some part inside is melted, but those two look kind of okay. HDMI is very dirty, so might not work, but let's see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Der geht ins Windows. Die Karte funktioniert. Yeah, you could just see it already in the German footage because that's something I cannot shoot twice, but the card works. Very impressive, very impressive. By the way, it was some MSI, I don't know if it was like, uh, what is the name of this model? So this card was an RTX 2070 Super. And now think about that people complain all the time that their GPU is running too hot. But if a GPU is active, it's much easier to damage it. Once hardware is powered off, it can sustain a lot. I mean, it's the same during the manufacturing. This card is, I don't know, like 150, 200 degrees hot, obviously because the solder has to melt. So it's not that big of a problem if a card is um, exposed to high temperature as long as it's not running. Obviously if it's running like silicon becomes a conductor at a certain temperature, I don't know like 120, 130 degrees Celsius, depends on the type of silicon, but yeah, that instantly kills like GPUs, but once it's not running, impressive. I don't have a cooler anymore for the card, but in theory it works.